Welcome back to Time Series Analysis. Today, we're going to focus on so-called input-output system in linear system notation, the set transform, cross-correlation function, and transfer function, and somewhere in between, we'll do some pre-widening, which is a nice tool in some cases, but not always the easiest thing to understand. But let's first look at what defines a linear system. So we have some input, then we have the system, and when we get an output. Fair enough. So we're going to study right now the case where we know the input and we know the output, whereas in much of the previous things we've done here, we said the input is some kind of white noise signal. Now we'll, for a moment, assume that we know what happens. So just to get a little bit deeper into how we can describe these systems. So as an example, First, you can say what happens if you take a box, let's call it a hollow box, and then you have insulation around it. Oh, insulation is typically simplified. Like this, and then to make it to clear that it's a hollow box, then I'll just show the thickness of the outer wall of the box here. Like that. We have this box here. Now, what we'll do is that we'll look at the temperature of the room around it, and we will look at the temperature of the box inside here. What we'll do as for an experiment is that we'll take the temperature of the room, make that red, and then what we'll do is that we'll have time. And then we have the different temperatures. What we'll do first, we'll just leave this box in a room, a constant temperature for a long time, which means that both the box and the room have the same temperature. And then we'll take the room and increase the temperature, so here, from 20 degrees to 100 degrees, and then just keep the room temperature there. Now, what you have to consider now is what do you expect to happen with the box? It was at 20 degrees here. What happens with it? Think of it for a while, press pause, think of it, and get back. So what will happen is eventually it will reach up close to the room temperature, if we wait long enough, we will not be able to measure the difference. We will never touch that if the room temperature is indeed fixed. The challenge is, how does it behave initially here? It depends actually on the assumptions for the insulation. Let's assume that the insulation layer is thin and has no thermal mass. Then what will happen is that it immediately starts to go up and you have an exponential curve going towards the new temperature setting here. If the insulation around it has a thermal mass, then it will kind of weigh a little bit before it gets up to the same path. But that's what's going to happen. So this is an example where we know the temperature of the room, which is the input, and then we're looking at the output with temperature of the box. So another case where we have a fluctuating input and then we have a more smooth output, and often we want to do that. We want to push some variation into the system to get a better understanding of what happens in that linear system. Now, one way of looking at that, this, this is what we call a step response, because we make a step increase in the input, and then we look at how does the output come to that. And this is, you can say, from a similar simulation, the red is the true, explaining your thing, and the black was what could be estimated from data. So we'll get back to how to do these things, but just to say that's how we deal with identifying what a system does. We look at how does it react to changes in the input, and changes that we know. Now, linear systems can be defined both in continuous time, where we have input x, and then you the system here could be differential equation, and then you have the observation yt, or in discrete time, you have x subscript t, then it's a different equation, and you have what's called the impulse response here. 
and we have YT as the observation, and then we can also do this in a frequency domain in a continuous thing with omega here in the set domain for the discrete time, and we can also do the Laplacian, which we'll skip for now. But to get back to what is a linear system, what defines uh, things to be linear? First of all, if you have an operator on a weighted sum of two signals, then it should be equal to the same weight of the operator applied on the individual signals. It should also be time invariant, which means that if the operator on xt is equal to yt, then it should also hold that if you shift time, that same relation should also hold. Stability here means that if you have a constrained input, then you have a constrained output. So not too heavy tails on your normal distribution, so I say normal distribution white noise, that is constrained as such, or a step increase is also constrained. Causality is another thing that we typically don't think so much about it, we just assume that it's there. So if it is causal, then it's physically feasible. So it means that the output does not depend on future value of the input. One place where it would be nice to have that, I don't know how many of you have tried noise cancelling headsets, but basically there, what you can only react to things that you hear of noise, but if you knew what noise was coming, then you could cancel the noise much better. But that is feasible and, s yeah, so is life. Uh, sometimes you can predict things, but you will not know exactly what will happen until it did happen. So, in the time domain, we have what is called the convolution here. In continuous time, I will focus most on discrete time, but just once again to show that the integrals in continuous time matches with sums in discrete time. So if you have the impulse response of an input signal x here, then with different shifts in time, then you have different shifts in the impulse, and then you have that integral across from minus infinity to, to infinity. As the time shifting here, now, of course, it will be zero for a lot part of that if it's causal, but we'll get back to that. In discrete time, we just have a weighted sum of the impulse response here. And we have the step response is defined as the sum from minus infinity to k, the step response up to time k, where, yeah, that's a similar. And in continuous time, well, the sum from minus infinity to k will just be the integral from minus infinity to the time point where we're looking at. So one thing that is nice is if you have a discrete, or actually also continuous, what you can do is that you can send a one through the system. In discrete time, sending a one means to take a Kronecker delta function that is xt equals to one for t equals to, ze to zero and zero otherwise. So that's one way of identifying what are the coefficients hk that are called the impulse response. As a simple example of that, if we have a system yt minus a yt minus 1 equals to bxt, we can move the yt minus 1 part to the right-hand side like this, and then we can expand that and what we see is that whenever we expand, we get a new yt. So effectively, we get an infinite sum of previous inputs here. So this is the impulse response for this system, this AR1 process. Effectively, if we use the ARIMA class in mind here. So that's what we have. First of all, is this linear in the input? Yes, it is, because we just have some weights on the previous things here, and those weights are just linear, so we can take sums of those, it works fine. Time invariant, yes, if we shift time, it works everywhere. So the impulse response here is then the b times a to the k power. 
So, and zero when k, uh, for, for k greater than zero, and it's zero when k is negative. So does that mean that the system is causal? Yes, it does, because of the k equals to zero when it's negative. The next thing is stability. If we take the sum of the absolute value of the impulse response, that's what we have to do. We can take b outside, and then we have the sum of a to the k power, and we end up with this here. So if a is smaller than 1, then it converges to something. If a is greater than or equal to 1, it does not converge. So what does this mean about stability? Well, it means that, yes, it is stable if a is numerically less than 1. Otherwise, it is not. So, stability, if this impulse response is convergent, then the system is stable. So that's what we kind of just did on the slide before. Does this sum converge? Yes, no. Then it is stable in the sense that if you have a confined input, you have confined output as well. Now, I said one way of identifying the impulse response is to send a 1 through the system. So let's look at this model where we have yt minus y 0 0.8 times yt minus 1 equal to 2 xt minus xt minus 1. So if we have xt equal to the Kronecker delta, then we can see that when k is less than 0, then yk is equal to 0 because we never got anything in here. The first time where we get something in, is when the time index is zero, because then we get two times a one here. And then, let's move that to the right-hand side, 0 0.8 times the previous zero gives us nothing, plus two times delta of zero, which is a one, and then delta of minus one is a zero. So we start off with eight zero to be a two. Then we can use that and go one step forward, so y1 is then 0 0.8 times the previous 1 plus 2 times delta of 1 minus delta of 0. Now delta of 1 is a 0, so we have 0 0.8 times the previous 2 plus 2 times 0 minus a 1 because we have that from there, and that gives us 0 0.6. Now when we continue, this last bit here, all the time indices here for the input are greater than 0, so there's no more effect of the input, all that is left is the effect of the previous output. So we have basically when k is greater than 0, then we have 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 to k minus first power. We start with 0 0.6, then get 0.48, and 0.48 times 0.8, and so forth all the way down. So to combine everything, we have this impulse response where it's 0 when k is negative, 2 for k equals to, to 0, and then we have this power series when we're going further up. And if we do the math on this, what is the sum from, yeah, we don't need to go to minus infinity because that's just sums of zeros of the signal here. Well, it gives you a 1, and uh, sorry, a 5, and 5 is definitely finite, so that sum converges so the system is stable. 